Welcome, everybody. So, uh, how are you doing? Good. good, good. Very happy to be here. Wonderful. Hi, KubeCon. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, hey, Lolita, I'd love to kick off today talking about developer experience. Can you share some of your wisdom with what's going on with you in the developer experience area? What's your, what, what are your thoughts? I keep hearing a lot about it on the, uh, in the hallway track. Yeah, I think, um, again, developers are key to the cloud native ecosystem. And uh, there's a lot happening in the CNCF, as well as other foundations of the LF, such as CDF, uh, with developer tools and projects. Uh, a couple of the projects that are really getting you know, adopted as you transform your business into cloud native infrastructure are Argo and Flux CD, right? Many of you may be using it already. And um, what I have seen is that these two projects are really driving some of the adoption for new, modern, integrated infrastructure out of the box for CI, CD, you know, which is Kubernetes native. Yeah, I think that, hi, I'm Kaylin from Shopify. Um, I think one of the really amazing things about using cloud native tools and technologies in your developer experience is that you invite your developers to participate in a community. I mean, look at how many people are here. And when you're part of that community, you learn from each other and you share. So as end users, we have so many opportunities to get together and hear from each other what we're using, what's working well, what's not. And at Shopify, um, we use that to really empower our developers to not have to worry about infrastructure at all. Um, the cloud native universe has allowed us to build a whole bunch of really great tools that support our cloud platform, um, which is, is just the best. So I think most developers at Shopify would say, like, infrastructure just works, which is, like, wild. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great um, answer. We, uh, at, at BlackRock, we're looking to drive developer experience through velocity, right? So developers are happy when they're shipping their code quickly. We're getting the business value out to the business quickly. We've already adopted things like Argo for uh, our GitOps control plane and driving the cloud native adoption. Really now it's about how do we get to that point where Shopify is where access to infrastructure that's external to the cloud native infrastructure is easily available, readily available, and is imperative to our success because these developers need this access quickly and efficiently so that we can maintain those velocity numbers and ultimately get the uh, business value out to the people that need it the most the business and our, our customers that we're supporting. Hi, everyone. I'm Mukalika from Intuit and founding member of Argo. So at Intuit, actually using cloud native technologies, our development velocity increased 9x in five years, which is amazing. Uh, we actually have a common platform, which all developers in the company use to build not only microservices, but also platforms on top, whether it's ML platform, AI platform, stream processing platform, and all of it. Uh, the whole company runs using the same standard uh, with security and compliance built in. So it's amazing. Well, speaking of security and compliance, you're actually, uh, that's a great segue into our next sec uh, sec section, uh, security. Oh my goodness, don't say that five times fast. <laughs> What are you doing in the cloud native security space? I would love to hear more. I always lock my door at night. Am I doing the right thing? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, as Kaylin said earlier, each team was managing their own infrastructure. So developers had to patch their AMIs with security patches. And they used to hate it. Now, the entire, so we have around 350 Kubernetes clusters running thousands of microservices. And actually, monthly, we upgrade these 350 clusters automatically with security patches. Developers don't even have to do anything. It's like git commit by the platform team, and all the clusters are upgraded. Similarly, all our containers come from base images, which are uh, actually created by security teams. And then we have runtime security tools running in all clusters, build time security tools. Security teams love cloud native. So we, uh, we're, we're doing something very similar. We're not quite at 355 or whatever you said yet, but we're, uh, we're in the hundreds and thousands of apps. So hundreds of clusters, thousands of apps. We run it as a platform. We want the platform to provide the batteries included for our developers so that no strings attached, low touch, 
we've got a highly competent uh, platform team, ops team that deliver it, um, but it takes adopting new practices, more policy as code, shifting more things left so people developing the platform, building on top of the platform can get early indicators that maybe they're doing something outside of compliance. And as a highly regulated company, security is absolute table stakes. And so we are very, very deliberately approaching it. Taylor. Wonderful. I mean, security is my jam. I am a uh, infrastructure security engineer at Shopify, so secure everything, obviously. <laughs> Developers don't need to build. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we try really hard, like Shopify is a company of builders. Our CEO is a builder through and through, um, and it is top of our mind to make sure that our builders are empowered to create whatever they need to, whenever they need to, quickly. Um, we really want to foster that creativity so that we're doing what matters most to us, which is making commerce better for everyone. And the way that my team does that is through building really, really strong guardrails on a wide paid path. So I know like we've been saying shift left for ages and ages, but sometimes I am getting used to the fact that we maybe need to shift right to allow developers space and make sure that we are supporting that creativity. We use all of the baked in security features in the platform that we use to support Kubernetes, but we also have a whole bunch of um, services that we've built internally that we call buddies that support a bunch of things like RBAC and network policies. Um, and of course we use secure base images and we just kind of make sure that again, the people who are building the things don't have to worry about it. We have it covered for them and CNCF allows us to do that. Definitely, and, and in fact, echoing what Kaelin said, I think infrastructure and security kind of go lockstep. You cannot think about one without the other. And um, security, in, in one sense, you know, has several good practices that can be used, um, which absolutely have to be considered and rolled out day one as you roll out your infrastructure. Uh, some of them are really making sure that your developer pipelines, for example, your development pipelines are enabled with code scanning and you know, fun foundational uh, uh, vulnerability scanning, which actually really helps in uh, mitigating many of the security issues that you can prevent back uh, out in production, right? So building day one with security in mind and having a comprehensive security architecture is just top of, top of the list. The other part that is super important is to be able to have secrets management as well as other key core areas built in into your entire infrastructure pipelines so that you, you can really you know, uh, deliver security at scale for your production systems. Amazing, wonderful. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today for our end users, and we'll have to pick up this conversation in the hallway track as I have some questions and some things to check on. Uh, uh, wonderful, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, catch us in the hallway track. Great to see all of you, and uh, thank you again so much to all of our end users. You are what awesome. make Cloud Native run. Thank you so awesome. much, everybody. Thank you. Catch you later. Thank you.